Well, uh, let's talk about honor. Let's talk about honor. Honor to whom honor is due. As we transition in life from being a child to being an adolescent, a teenager, and then from a teenager into adulthood, and then from adulthood we go to a place of settling down, I believe so, uh, getting married, get, having children, being called a father, being called a husband, being called a wife or a mother. As we grow in this life, we tend to see flaws of our parents that are more pronounced with age as we continue to, you know, experience life. And this, this raises some key question in our lives about the authority of our parents in our lives. This can be questionable because when we were little, our parents meant everything to us or our guardian meant everything to us. But as we grow in age, we tend to see, man, I'm doing better than my parent. I'm doing better than my parents. I'm doing better than my guardians. And I can see so much flaws in their lives. Well, there are two questions here that I want to just raise and they'll sort of challenge us and provoke us to be able to see much clear as per God's word because the entrance of God's word in our lives bring forth understanding and the understanding thereof is only understanding for the simple. That's what the Bible says, understanding for the simple and the questions goes like this how can I honor my parent how can I honor my guardian when I don't respect them see I honor them but I don't respect them because the Bible tells me to do so so I just honor them but I don't respect them another one is does honoring them assume that I do not respect them? Does honoring them assume that I do not respect them? So it's important to get these questions well. they kind of interlinked but not really interlinked. We're just going to divide this one, the respect and the honoring. What do they mean? What are their definitions? And what are the definitions in line with the word of God? As we will look into God's word. Respect is feeling deep or admiration for someone or something. Elicited by their abilities, qualities, or achievements so elicited by abilities qualities or achievements make us to tend to respect something or respect someone another one is regards for the feelings wishes rights traditions of others so when I respect your right it means I respect you when I don't recognize your right then I like risk I lack respect toward you that's what literally it means here when I kind of accept your tradition then it means I respect you if I don't accept your tradition I don't respect you if I accept your wishes then it means that I respect you if I don't same way so respect can be both given and received. It's a two-way traffic. I respect you, you respect me. If you don't respect me, I don't respect you. So it's a two-way traffic as we see here. Every individual in the society is considered to be worthy of respect until 
they prove otherwise. If someone is disrespectful, then they don't receive my respect. That's what happens in the world's view. So I'm just looking at the definition in the world's view what really takes place. A good example, we respect our teachers, we respect our mentors because they teach us and we're able to listen to them and take in that which they are teaching us. And of course it is helpful for our education, for our advancement in terms of education. We respect the law by abiding by them because we know if we don't respect the law, if you disobey or you break the traffic rules, what happens in your life? It means either your license is taken away from you or you're banned for certain duration of time of not being able to drive. So that just makes you to respect the traffic rule simply because you know bringing it uh, brings consequences. And also we respect people who help us by thanking them. So when you help me, I respect you by thanking you because of the abilities as we have seen earlier on of that which you've given to me. So I'm able to thank you. you. I mean, I'm able to thank you. So by thanking you, I respect you. Simple. That's what it means. So respect is a connection that is deeply connected with all our lives. Whether you like it or not, it is connected with all of our lives. Simple as such. But when you look at the word respect in Greek, the word is theiaiemesethi, meaning honor of value to place a great value or high price on something. Great value or a high price on something. It can be a car because of what the car can do to me. It gives me proper mileage and that makes me to respect it. It's faster. I respect it. Uh, the machine depends on which kind of machine you do drive so and the level of respect toward it as well so I'm only not respecting people but I'm also respecting something because of its value because of its ability because of its achievement so you see respect has to do with something or someone but in the biblical aspect respect is far different it's more about a perceived inequality in that we recognize that some things and some people are more important than we is not placing yourself before others but esteeming them more than you and philippians chapter 2 verse 3 says that do nothing from selfish or empty deceit or oh, I mean empty conceit sorry do nothing from empty or selfishness conceit it talks I mean this talks about motives talks about strife but with an attitude of humility so I believe in the biblical aspect for me to be able to come to a place of respect, it has to be accompanied by humility. Humility as a vital role toward me or toward you giving respect. So humility is, is key, is a necessity here. And when that humility comes, whereby I'm not self-righteous, I'm not arrogant, I believe we become disrespectful because we are self-righteous, we as believers sometimes, or we are arrogant. When those two things come, then there is a loss of respect. 
and accompanies it. But when we regard others more important than ourselves, it shows or it portrays the fruit of the Spirit, gentleness. There is humility that only can be caused by us being enriched by the grace of God to walk in total humility. On the other hand, honor. Honor is to give special recognition hold someone in high esteem. So there's a special recognition in holding someone in high esteem. That is honor. Yeah, honor. When you look at the word respect and honor, the difference here is that honor has to do with, with someone. Respect has to do with someone or something. So honor can only be given not to something, but to someone. That's the simple fact. So, a question comes here. How do we honor or respect parents? Talking about we who are coming from a certain family. How do we honor or respect parents who without any repentance, listen this, who without any repentance act in dishonorable and blameworthy ways? There is no repentance here. There is, they are acting dishonorable. And there is blameworthy ways in their lives. But you can attest to that. And people can attest to that as well. It's a very crucial question here. Because every Christian has to come to terms with the biblical command of Jesus. Matthew chapter 19 verse 19 which says honor your father and your mother simple that is what jesus will say honor them he didn't say honor them because they do one two three four five things to you but he said just honor them they give birth to you honor them simple fact it doesn't matter who they are but just honor them and paul the apostle emphasizes in ephesians chapter 6 verse 2 3 he says Honor, esteem, value as precious. <laughs> Interesting. Honor, esteem, value as precious. Your parents are very precious in, in regardless of how they look like. They are precious. Esteem them. Value them. And be respectful to them. So, the word here begins with, when we honor our parents, then respect accompanies it. Honor opens a way for respect to come in, in simple terms. That's what it says here. Because this is the first commandment with a promise. Hallelujah. This is the only commandment that has a promise in it. And it's the area that we are more challenged in this face of the earth. It has a promise yet it's more challenging. Some simple fact because of people, the relationship that are surrounding us in terms of our parents or guardians. So that it may be well with you and that you may have a long life on the earth. The promise is it may be well with you. <laughs> and have a long life on the earth when I talk about long life and of course there's this song says with long life you will satisfy me I'm talking about the quality of life not the quantity we have perfect example in the in the Bible our Savior our Lord Jesus Christ to live for 33 and a half years but it was quality the relationship that he had with the father awesome glorious amazing the relationship that he had with other people awesome amazing glorious and we imitators of Christ we Christians we believers as I'm speaking to us as well we want quality of life, it's not about the quantity, but how much our lives transform people 
the relationship around our lives, how much it is impactful, not only to our peers, not only to our siblings, not only to our parents, but to any relationship that we are led or we come across. That's quality. So even though thousands of people have had parents who consistently acted in dishonorable and blameworthy ways, but it's also a crucial question because the same issue faces all of us in regard to all people. So not only are we seeing the flaws of our parents, yeah, not, not only their flaws, but also I think this is a reflection of who we are. Most of us, we tend to point fingers to our parents because now maybe we are living better than them or we are doing things much better. Maybe you are a good parent to our kids. Maybe they may have not been. But we should look at ourselves. Self-introspection. It's all about us looking deep down us. Down ourselves. That's what I mean here. And that's what we are being taught here from the scriptures. And that's what I'm bringing closer home for all of us to, to get to understand this. It's, it's very, very important. It's crucial. First Peter chapter 2, verse 17 says, Show respect for all people. That's the Bible says. All people treat them honorably. Yes, they do not deserve honor, but treat them honorably. They may not deserve it. Just treat them. The Bible says treat them honorably. Love the brotherhood of believers. Fear God, honor the king. So it breaks it into loving the brethren, the people of God. Revering God, fearing God, and then honoring the king, the person in authority. Treat them honorably. That's why my title is about give honor to whom honor is due. That's the most important thing. And of course we know that there are horrible people in the world who do despicable things. Since the time memorial when this world began, we can see people who did despicable things. Right from Cain all the way to the kings, to the rulers, we see that they did despicable. And also even in our generation, we see people doing wicked things. And it reminds us that their heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Unless it is surrendered to the Lord. We are all capable. We are vulnerable. We are susceptible. And so that's what the Bible is really bringing us to a place of let not just dishonor people or disrespect them because they mistreat us, but we should look to them through the eye of Jesus. Simple times, looking to them through the eye of Jesus. And I will discuss more points as we go on. So, the question is, why should we honor then? <laughs> why should we honor? Amazing. Why should you honor? Why should I honor? Number one, because human beings are created in the image of God. That's the fact. We should honor because human beings are not created like things. Whereby we just respect things. But human beings are created in the image of God. There is honor that is owing to human beings simply because they are created in the image of God and should be treated differently than the animals. <laughs> yeah, simple. But we see human beings treating each other as animals, which is not as God ordained. James chapter 3 verse 9 to 12 says, With the tongue we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we cast men who have been made in the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth come both blessing and cursing. These things, my brother, should not be. 
this way. For we have a moral obligation to speak in a manner that reflects our fear of God and profound respect for His precepts. That the spring sent out from the same opening both fresh and bitter water, can a fig tree, my brothers, produce olives or a grapevine produce figs, nor can salt water produce fresh. What do I mean? What does this scripture mean here? In other words, the sheer existence of human beings in the image of God, the likeness of God, she will call forth from us a kind of honor. When God created everything, he said, it's good. Amazing. But now when he created man, he said, what? Let us create man in our own likeness. That's our God, our Father. Then who are we who have been created by our Heavenly Father to suggest or come up with an answer that says you are better than the other person. You deserve res more respect, more honor than the other person. I think when we look in that view, then we are only taking in people what they can give back to us. It's more about self. I, I believe self comes in because of something they can give back to us. So I'm only able to honor you because you can give something back to me. You've got a certain ability that is beneficial to me. Or I can achieve something through you. So it's like there's a string attached to it. But according to the biblical concept, there's no strings attached. I believe the only string attached here is because human beings were created in the likeness and the image of God. Simple fact. So someone might ask you or come up with a question here and say, how do you honor a child molester, a rapist, a murderer, a leader of a genocide? How can you honor someone who breaks into your house and steals things? Someone who insults you publicly? How will you honor such a person who steps on your toes, who is unkind to you? How will you honor such a person? <laughs> yeah, those are the difficult questions here. And it just takes me back to Jesus. Yeah. He took it all upon himself to show us a perfect example. They insulted him. They beat him up. Said all manner of kind of things about him. Killed him. And you know what? He didn't utter anyone. What he did is this. He stretched out his hand and said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. And I think that's what we can do. Simple fact. That's what we can do. We just say, Father, forgive them. They do not know what, know what they are doing. And of course, Paul says that in Romans chapter 12, I believe so, overcome evil by doing good. You can't overcome evil by retaliating. It's just by doing good. Simple fact. The way to overcome it is by doing good. So when we have people like rapists, people like murderers, people like child molesters, leaders of genocide, the only thing we do here is to give them trial by jury, just because they are human and not animals. 
They have to first try it. Simple fact. That's a form of honor. We give them the right to first the trial. Even if the, if the trial is followed, followed later by execution. Look at Exodus chapter 21 verse 28 to 32. I want to just go and read that. You see how this all began. So God has put the authority in place to be able to handle this because they are God's ministers. We don't take it into our own hands. Our Father put authority in their places. Look at Romans chapter 13 verse 1 to 7 says, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. The governing authority, there is no authority except from God, granted by His permission and sanction. So God has granted this with His permission and with His sanction. The simple fact here. And those which exist have been put in place by God. No one else. God has put in place. Therefore, whoever resists governmental authority resists the ordinance of God. And those who have resisted it will bring judgment, civil penalty on themselves. For civil authorities are not a source of fear for people of good behavior. Now that's what we define here. People of good behavior, but for those who do evil, that's why they are being put there for people who do evil. Do you want to be unafraid of authority? Do what is good, and you will receive approval and commendation. For he is God's servant to you for good. <laughs> they are God's servant to us for good. But if you do wrong, you should be afraid. For he does not carry the ex executioner's sword for nothing. He is God's servant and avenger who brings punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be subject to civil authorities, not only to escape the punishment that comes with wrongdoing, but also as a matter of principle, knowing what is right before God. For this same reason, you pay taxes. For civil authorities are God's servant, devoting themselves to governance, pay to all what is due, tax to whom tax is due, custom to whom customs, respect to whom respect, honor to whom honor. Now that one comes there in handy as you speak that for. So number one, why honor? Because human beings are created in the image of God. Number two, because of the natural relationships we have with them. Who? The natural relationship we have with our parents or guardians. Let's talk, just say parents, yeah. The natural relationships we have with our parents, biological parents. God used them to bring us into this world. That's a fact. It doesn't matter who they are. But the natural relationship. There is honor that is simply owing to natural relations as God has established them. And here, just thinking of honor of father and mother, because that is a natural relationship that God has established. And it gains its honorableness from his ordering of things, not just from the quality of parents. Or due to age. Leviticus 19.32 says, You shall stand up before the gray head and honor the face of an old man. You shall fear your God with profound reverence. I am the Lord. So it's not only honoring our parents, but also the aged. People who are older than us. The natural relationships we have with them. Our grandparents. <laughs> yes, people who advance in age. We honor them. The Bible says here. Because when we do that, we give reference to God. Reverence to God. 
1 Timothy 5, 1 to 2. Never speak harshly to an older man, but appeal to him respectfully as you would to your own father. Talk to younger men as you would to your own brothers. Treat older women as you would your mother, and treat younger women with all purity as you would your own sisters. That's the order of God. First Peter 5, 5. Likewise, you younger men of lesser rank and experience, be subject to your elders, seek their counsel. And all of you, clothe yourself with humility toward one another. So there is also honoring one another. And that requires humility here. Tie on the servant's apron. For God is opposed to the proud, the disdainful, the presumptuous, and he fits them, but he gives grace to the humble. You want to have that grace of honoring people? I mean, you want to have grace? Begin to honor each other. Honor them that are advance in age that's what the Bible says here number three why honor because of the God ordained authority in its place and of course I've read that Romans chapter 12 sorry Romans chapter 13 verse 1 to 7 you're going to read it but also there's first Peter 2 13 to 16 which says submit yourselves to the authority of every human institution for the sake of the Lord to honor his name when we submit ourselves to the authority of every human institution for the sake of the Lord we honor his name whether it is to a king as one in a position of power or to governors as sent by him to bring punishment to those who do wrong and to praise and encourage those who do right it's amazing because the people who are writing this, Paul was executed. Peter was executed by the same authority. Yet these guys are telling us to honor them. And these guys kill them, kill the apostles who were actually honoring the Heavenly Father and serving the purposes of God. Yet they are emphasizing here how we should honor the authority so long as let me say so long as the authority doesn't oppose you in declaring the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and there's so many examples there where they were told by the authority not to speak the name of Jesus but they went ahead and did that For it is the will of God that by doing right you may silence or muzzle, you may gag the culpable ignorance and irresponsible criticism of foolish people. Leave us free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover or pretext for evil, but use it and live as born servants of God. Born servants of God. I believe, let me just leave here and then we'll continue the next one later on. Starting from point number four. So, just been speaking about honoring, honor to whom honor is due, which is very important in, in our lives. And more than that is to honor one another and so I pray right now that Lord Jesus it's our desire to walk in a place of first and foremost honoring you Lord as our Heavenly Father giving you reverence giving you the glory and as you enable us empower us by your Holy Spirit to be able to walk in humility and honoring one another not only fulfilling the law but being imitators of Christ and 
bringing glory to you. When we do this, Lord, we know that we are fulfilled. <laughs> we are fulfilled because that which we, we are seeing our fathers doing, just like Jesus said, whatever I saw you do, he did it. How we pray that we may follow the same way, the same path for your glory. Thank you, Lord. Amen.